At some point in the early 2000s, hundreds of bizarre websites began popping up in relation to what was coined the Children's Immortality Project. Was this some kind of cult or a weird program for children, or was it something even darker? Let's investigate. If you enjoy mysteries, true crime, disappearances and conspiracies, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, links for those will be in the description. So this is a pretty deep rabbit hole, and this video doesn't exactly conclude the mystery. Having researched it pretty thoroughly, I'm still not entirely sure what's going on. But I hope this video serves as an adequate introduction and summary of what we know so far. This mystery was first discussed on 4chan sometime around 2009, though it appears the original post has been deleted. It might be archived somewhere, but I haven't yet been able to find it. A lot of posts and websites in general have been deleted, but enough information remains for us to at least get the gist of the mystery. Sometime in the early 2000s, hundreds, maybe even thousands of strange websites were created by a man named Robert Ray Hedges. Many of these sites were just links to other sites, and many of those sites were links to more sites. Some of them served to explain a bit about what was going on, but simply leave you with more questions than answers. From what I gather, the Children's Immortality Project was founded based on Robert's hypothesis that children could be immortal if they never learned about death. I mean, if you never learned about the game, you could never lose, so maybe he was onto something. By the way, you just lost. Anyway, he stated that procreative sex is the only cause of all death, and therefore it violates thou shall not kill, which is definitely an interesting take on a religious view. He also said that the restitution of our inherited sin is to use all of humanity's creative time in mortality resolution engineering. Basically, he was totally obsessed with the idea of immortality. If you're unfortunate enough to have heard about death, you're probably screwed. But according to Robert, changing your diet can increase longevity, specifically by eating a lower calorie, more nutritionally dense diet. Pretty run-of-the-mill charlatan rubbish, really, but it's insane how many of these websites he created, and it doesn't even seem like he was trying to sell a product. He recommended books written by other people, but I haven't yet seen him promote anything he's selling himself. He also had entire websites dedicated to conspiracy theories, specifically that water can be used as a fuel, and that it's been suppressed by the government. While you can make out roughly what Robert's beliefs are, a lot of the websites are pretty incoherent and come across as the ramblings of a possibly ill man. I'm not even sure what he was trying to achieve. You could follow link after link on those sites and basically get nowhere. The ones that had actual information on them were just all over the place, and it seemed that little effort was made to make them all congruent. While most of them focused on immortality in some way, you'd see a random paragraph of information on one site, then never see it again on another. He proclaimed that he was trying to take over the internet, and had websites dedicated to that too. Which explains why the sites feature whole sections of keywords, which he thought would make his websites more searchable. He seemed to think there was some kind of conspiracy to silence him, and prevent his websites being found on Google. This led him to register countless, quote, keyword-rich domain names in order to spread his message. These included ones related to the program, such as children's immortality rights.blogspot.com, and unrelated names such as Hawaiian Vacation Rentals.bravejournal.com and Titanium Rings.007.com. A good chunk of these are accessible via Wayback Machine, and they all just have bad formatting, badly edited images, and unfitting music. It's like the remaining ones have been preserved in a time capsule since they were first created. This one shows nine steps to power for all kids. So far, this is the only website I've found that mentions this. It's probably on others, but it's just baffling to me how varied the websites can be. They're not all just paragraphs copied and pasted. There are a couple of interesting points to note about this list, and I think it alone gives us some insight. Step three, confirm that human replication is administered solely by females who can easily acquire sperm anywhere in the world and then commence to create a person to be destructively tested. This isn't the only time he's implied that women are to blame for all this. Step six, confirm that no person, except for Robert Ray Hedges, and no government, is currently protecting you or planning to protect you from this deadly criminal intent. That definitely sounds like something a cult leader would say. 
The blogs that have comments enabled show that some people actually bought into this and followed him, or it was just him using different accounts, who knows. He has two YouTube channels, one with no uploads, but two created playlists which mostly feature music videos. The other has one video on the Stanley Mayer's water fuel cell. He also has a Flickr account, and the first image you're met with is a not safe for work one, which is not only totally out of place, but it is a bit weird considering how focused on children this whole thing is. When you scroll further down, there is literally photos of children on the same page. He also has at least two Facebook accounts, one of which he posted on as recently as October 2017, which is noteworthy because commenters on an archived 4chan post from years before thought that he'd already given it all up for whatever reason, and many of his websites had been taken down or the domains sold before that point. Finally, in terms of social media presence, he was active on two different Twitter accounts, the most recent tweet being in September 2017, one month before his final public Facebook post. He seemed to be pretty active on all of his accounts. In addition to creating all these websites, I can only imagine how much time and money he spent doing all this. Wayback Machine shows that the websites were updated over the years too, they weren't just created then left alone. It's anyone's guess what happened to Robert, but he'd been doing it for well over a decade at this point, he was certainly dedicated. What happened to him is a mystery in itself though, why give up on spreading the word when at one point he was so focused on doing so? Did he somehow realise his claims weren't true and give up, or maybe he died? That would explain the apparent absence from social media since 2017. Robert's outlandish beliefs are pretty interesting themselves, you could probably spend hours just clicking through all his websites if you have the patience, but what makes this mystery particularly intriguing is the rumours surrounding it. People who attempted to investigate the websites around the time of the original 4chan post claimed that if they were signed into their Google accounts when clicking through the links, they would receive various types of spam emails, even though they never entered their email address into any of Robert's websites. Most people reported getting generic, not safe for work spam, but a few people claimed to have received much darker content. Not all of these users specified what they saw, but some said they received graphic images of animals and even CP, i.e. inappropriate images or videos of children. It's impossible to know if these people are telling the truth or just trying to embellish the whole thing. I'm not even sure that would be possible, but there are enough testimonies in addition to a couple of screenshots of emails to make you wonder. Regardless, it was widely agreed that you're better off not looking into any of this. Rumour has it that there were secret codes hidden in these websites as well as the emails that people received which could have just been disguised as spam. It was also said that if you clicked the right links that you would eventually get invited to become a member. I'm not sure what would happen after that. It was suggested that this could be the work of an SEO bot which can be used to boost website traffic. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but presumably it could be used to create new websites or to optimise existing ones to maximise traffic. That's easier to believe than someone doing all that work themselves, but it still doesn't answer the main question, why? One theory, which I think is probably true, regardless of whether or not anything else is going on, is that Robert is mentally ill. Some people have suspected that he might have schizophrenia, but it could be a number of disorders and it doesn't really matter specifically what. The ramblings, paranoia and the obsessions really do hint at some kind of mental illness. Reading between the lines, I consider it a possibility that Robert lost a child himself and that could be why he became so obsessed with stopping other children dying. It's possible that the reason for his apparent disappearance is that he got psychological help and just gave up on all this, and honestly that's the best possible outcome. I couldn't find any obituaries online for a Robert Hedges that matched any of the details we know about him, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's still alive. Another theory is that this is some kind of cult. It certainly checks a lot of the boxes, Robert even referred to himself as the messiah on more than one occasion. He was preoccupied with spreading the word and he was literally preaching about immortality, which in itself is a little bit culty. There are also a few sites which mention something along the lines of I need all your lives now to create immortality, which taken at face value sounds pretty ominous, though he could have been speaking metaphorically I suppose. On one website, he mentions auditioning the most beautiful females on earth for the position of Jesus A. Christ, which suggests some kind of recruitment process perhaps. I don't think there's any question that the foundations for a cult were laid out. I'm not saying Robert specifically set out to create one, but if enough people believed what he was saying and followed him, it would be almost inevitable. 
With all this happening so long ago, and the lack of information on it now, it's hard to say for sure, but thankfully it doesn't seem like he ever gained much of a following. It's been suggested that if this was a cult, maybe it was also some kind of program for children to prevent them learning about death and therefore prevent them from dying. Or it could be some kind of experiment to test Robert's hypothesis. Or maybe even something to do with DNA sequencing and creating a child to be immortal. Another possibility is that this is an ARG. If something like this happened today, it'd probably be instantly passed off as one because they're everywhere now, but back then they weren't quite as common. Maybe some of the rumours were true, and people really did receive strange emails, and clicking around on the sites would lead you to an invite to become a member, but maybe that was something to do with an ARG in itself. There are comments on an archived 4chan thread mentioning that people were invited, but I couldn't find any comments from anyone who was actually invited themselves. If that's all true, it sounds pretty typical of an ARG. It's all just so extensive though. If this really was an ARG, Robert was certainly committed to making it seem real. He spent years and years trying to spread the word and probably spent a lot of money trying to do so as well. I don't believe this theory personally though. I think Robert genuinely believed the things that he put on his websites. Regardless of any other agendas he may or may not have had, I think his primary goal was to spread the word about immortality because he thought it was possible. Regarding the emails, maybe Robert was trying to make money by harvesting email addresses and the rest of it was all just some big publicity stunt to draw people in. Again though, it's just very hard to believe considering how extensive this all is. And there's nothing to suggest that he actually made any significant amount of money doing this. If anything, I imagine he lost money. The final theory we'll discuss is the darkest, but also the most speculative. On the remaining discussions that can be found online, a very popular theory is that the Children's Immortality Network was actually some kind of front for child abuse, exploitation, or a way for people to share CP online. As I already mentioned, some people claim to have received emails containing inappropriate files of children, and according to this comment from an archived 4chan post, someone downloaded pictures from one of the sites and found encrypted CP. Like a lot of what is recalled online about the mystery, that hasn't been confirmed, and quite frankly I don't want to go looking for that stuff, so I have no idea if it's true or not. When browsing through Robert's websites and social media profiles, I didn't find anything like that, but I didn't attempt to download anything either. The only questionable thing I found was on his Flickr account, where there was a not safe for work image right at the top of the page, and then when you scroll further down there's images of children. The people in the photo were adults, and there were no inappropriate images of children, but it's certainly a weird contrast. It's even weirder when you realise that he clearly thought that children were viewing his websites and he even directly addresses them on more than one occasion. For example, this picture says, maybe you are a child that doesn't want to die. And there are paragraphs on some of his websites that address children under 13, telling them how they can create their own websites and spread the immortality message. If he fully expects children to visit these sites, why have any inappropriate photos of them? There were a few other comments on the 4chan thread that vaguely hinted at similar minorly inappropriate things. One read, Also, look at the little kid in the car looking at the girl's ass. I'm not sure if that was on one of the websites or in the screenshot that a user had posted shortly before. Robert had a habit of making pretty bad puns, and on a couple of sites he tried to make a pun out of the abbreviation CPU by wording it CP, then U as in YOU, separating the letters CP which of course led some to think that this was a clue for people trying to access CP. So there are a few weird things, and it does all seem a little bit dodgy, but there's no solid evidence to suggest that any of this centred around anything inappropriate with children. If it was anything like that, why would Robert be so focused on spreading the websites and trying to get them to the top of the search results? I guess he could have been trying to normalise it, but it just seems very risky. I wouldn't completely rule out this theory, but I just don't think there's enough proof to suggest that that's what's happening. I can only wonder if some evidence got lost in posts that were never archived. There has to be some reason why this was such a popular theory. But then again, maybe it was just the most sensationalised theory and people just latched onto it. I posted about all this on the Internet Mysteries subreddit with hopes someone might remember the project or have any further information on it. But while a couple of people vaguely remembered hearing about it, not much new information was provided. However, one user managed to find an interview on YouTube about Robert with one of his friends, Prahas, which I watched after writing most of the notes for this. It's not great, I'm not sure I'd even recommend it. The interviewer spends like five minutes in disbelief that Prahas has never heard of Joe Rogan. 
but it does clear a couple of things up. The interviewer begins by explaining that he remembers looking into the project with friends when it blew up at the time, and that he sent emails to Robert and received coded emails back almost instantly. Price confirms that Robert was a real person, not a robot, and that he single-handedly created all those websites. Apparently, he spent seven or eight hours most days for 15 years doing so, which is just insane. Price confirms that Robert is unfortunately dead, and that explains why he dropped off the internet. He also claims that the Children's Immortality Project was not a cult, and it was never about CP or exploiting children. But I guess he would say that regardless, if he was either involved or at least covering for a friend. Still, as we already established, there isn't a huge amount of evidence to support any of those theories, so maybe this guy was just being honest. Maybe he didn't even fully know what was going on himself. He speaks more about his experience with Robert than the project itself, so I wonder if he was even involved in it much. Perez seems open to immortality and the other ideas, but clearly isn't as far gone as his friend was. His recollection of Robert is positive, though. He described him as an eccentric genius. I'm not sure about genius, but he certainly was eccentric. As for my thoughts, I wouldn't rule out something deeper going on below the surface. It's just hard to say now with so many websites deleted or inactive and with Robert no longer being alive. I really would love to see the original 4chan thread, as I think there were probably things that were documented there that were forgotten about when users tried to recall what happened on a later thread. It's entirely possible that Robert was just an eccentric man who may have suffered with some kind of mental illness that led him to become obsessed with the ideas he spoke about on his websites, but that he wasn't some devious cult leader or anything dark like that. I'm almost certain that there's some level of embellishment here. I'm not saying there's nothing more to the mystery, I think there maybe is, but I just think it's become so shrouded in rumours that at this point it's nearly impossible to work out what's true and what isn't. Going back to the websites themselves though, even if there is no huge mystery or conspiracy, they still serve as a fascinating dive into the mind of a fascinating man. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you remember hearing about the Children's Immortality Project, and if so, what do you think was going on? If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.